Alrighty, and this is the second episode of the new audio format for the Craptacular Review. I'm Justin New Year, Hull- new Craptacular Review. There you go, yes. I'm Justin Hollinger. I'm Kevin Seiler. And uh, we're on to week two of the Cult Movie Challenge. And, uh... Well, f- well first, uh... I want to give a quick shout out oh, to yes. the, uh... The Letterbox community who has been very supportive and uh following this cult movie challenge oh uh, yes we should point out yeah uh this all came about uh i i just had the uh, i was inspired by this other challenge on letterboxd that was uh the season movie challenge i think it was yeah Is that what it was like, called like the 2015 to 2016 season challenge yeah um let's see let me let me pull up uh the name of the uh, user that came up with that monsieur uh, flynn correct yep monsieur flynn came up with the uh, Letterboxd Season Challenge, and that inspired me to come up with the Cold Movie Challenge. Different theme every week, movie per theme, mm-hmm. and we're just doing reviews on the movies and covering the themes. Yeah. So this week... <laughs> this week, it's Fred Olin Ray week. Uh, should do a little background on who Fred Olin Ray is. He's a filmmaker that I think he started in the late 70s. Sounds right, yeah. Yep. Uh, made uh, well over 100 movies at this point. Yeah. Also should be noted, he is also a professional wrestler. Really? Yes. <laughs> oh, my God. I like him even more. I think uh, Fabulous Freddie Valentine is uh, his uh, stage name for that. I, th- I think I recognize the name. I thought I did, too. Uh, I think it's... I I don't think I know who he is, like, from experience. I think maybe yeah. I was just thinking of uh, Greg the Hammer Valentine. That and like. Classy Freddie Blassie and all that sort of stuff, but uh, yeah, I I was very I was quite a bit hesitant going into this. Uh, <laughs> I, I will say though, like looking through his filmography, mm-hmm. uh, some amazing posters. I'll agree with that for this movie. I mean, well, this... also the fact that he's made quite a few like uh, Skinamax movies. Yeah, so those were entertaining posters <laughs> in their own right. Yeah, uh, but I, I was very hesitant because uh, before this movie. Uh, which we watched uh, Hollywood Chainsaw Hookers. Yes. Uh, which I was intrigued by because of all three of those words. Yeah. Uh, I, w- I was a little hesitant because I've had experience with Fred Owen Ray films. Uh, I watched The Alien Dead and a slasher movie called Scalps. <laughs> uh, I think I put that one on my watch list, actually. Scalps is not too bad. Yeah. It, it's a little slow, but it's not horrible. Alien Dead is horrible. <laughs> just terrible. It's just like shit makeup effects in a swamp because they have access to a swamp. Yeah. <laughs> and the end. Uh, which, speaking of which, uh, while we're get, when we're getting into uh, Hollywood Chainsaw Hookers, uh, do segue on the the end. This was a really short movie. Yeah. Like it, it, it the runtime is short. It's uh, hour fifteen. Yeah. And even then, it feels really short. Like, it feels shorter than that. Right. It feels like uh, a sl- relatively low-budget episode of Tales from the Crypt. Yeah. That's what I honestly thought. <laughs> it, like, And it, it felt like it had the runtime of a Tales from the Crypt episode. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, let's, so did you want to do the synopsis of the movie? <laughs> I'll, I'll let you go ahead since I stumbled through the Wild Angel synopsis. Okay. Uh, the synopsis of this movie is it's a horror comedy. Yeah which the title would probably tell you is the case. And the main character is this film noir sort of detective. Real hard-boiled type Yeah, like a Philip Marlowe sort of guy who uh, apparently didn't get the memo that it was 1987 at the time. (laughs) And he's tasked with finding this uh, runaway girl in uh, California, Mm -hmm. Hollywood. Yeah. And... He finds out that she is, uh, well, it's kind of misleading because, like, some of them are hookers. Yeah. But she was just a stripper. Yeah. But she still had joined some sort of... Uh, Chainsaw worshipping cult. Yeah. Which, I, it was weird. <laughs> Le- led by... Led by Gunnar Hansen, yeah. who played Leatherface in the original Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Yes, rest in peace. And uh, we learned in this film why he did not have any speaking roles as Leatherface. <laughs> uh, he's very... He's, he's got too gentle of a voice. Yeah. Like, and he, and he, 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 he was like... 
just his look in this movie almost made it. He looked like a normal version, like a, a almost human version of Robert Zadar. <laughs> yeah, he kind of looked like a cross between uh, Grizzly Adams and Kane Hodder, the guy yeah. that played Jason. Yeah, I could see that for a few movies that everyone knows as Jason, even though he was like you talk about actors who have played Jason. Everybody mm-hmm. knows of Kane Hodder, even mm-hmm. though he wasn't really that prolific of a Jason. Well, see, he was seven. He was in seven, eight, nine, and ten. So that's four. Yeah. Four, and then, so you have the ten, Freddy vs. Jason, and the remake. So that's 12 movies. He was in a third of them. Yeah. That's more than anyone else has. Yeah, yeah, I guess that's fair. I, I thought he was only in, like, two or three, honestly. But... I, you know, I... I I, I never thought he was, like, amazing as Jason. Honestly, yeah. if anything, I, I kind of wish they... I'm glad they did kind of go back to the routine of, like, we're just going to get a different actor. And every time he's like, yeah. it's like we're getting just a little variation <laughs> here and there. Yeah. Instead of just the same thing every time. But, uh, yeah, going off track there. Uh, yeah, he <laughs> the detective finds out that she is a stripper that's joined a chainsaw worshipping cult. Why it's based around hookers and strippers, I don't know. Because tits. There you go. <laughs> Uh, I th- they even mention at one point, like when it's being revealed that this is a thing, this cult. Uh, the t- detective even like, how how the fuck is this possible? Yeah. There was no <laughs> chainsaws in Egypt. Uh, yeah, then, which is where they date back. And don't don't they basically just like, yeah, there was. <laughs> <laughs> basically, it's, yeah. like, it's like, what about the chainsaw of the gods or something? Oh, like that's that. right. Yes. Oh, this fucking. <laughs> It's almost kind of like that. It kind of reminds me of... Did you ever see the movie Wanted with Angelina Jolie? Yeah. It kind of reminds me <laughs> of in that movie... Like, you compare that to something like The Matrix, where, like, you're able to do all these gravity and physics-defined things. In The Matrix, they have this really complicated explanation yeah. of, like, oh, well, you have to understand that this is a fictional reality, and once you realize that, you can adjust it, blah, blah, blah. And Wanted, it's like... <laughs> How are you able to curve this ball? It's like, who the fuck said you can't? Yeah. <laughs> it's like, science? <laughs> Scientists? Yeah. <laughs> That's basically what this movie's saying. It's yeah. Like, how, how can you have an ancient chainsaw worshiping cult when chainsaws aren't ancient? Who says they're not? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Moving on. And so yeah, that's yeah, that's pretty much the plot right there. Yeah, chainsaw worshiping cult uh, centered around hookers and strippers, and a detective is tracking down a runaway. In Hollywood. Who's joined the cult. <laughs> yes. Uh, the Runaway is played by uh, uh, Scream Queen Goddess, yes. Lenia Quigley. Uh, Davenport, Iowa native. Exactly. Uh, we are recording this in Davenport, Iowa, yeah. so uh, very proud of her. Oh, yes. Absolutely. She was also in Return of the Living Dead. Mm, yes, which was my first exposure to her. Same. Uh, I, I remember... And her first exposure to me. Yes. Because she was naked. And then you expose yourself to her. <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, I do remember, I think maybe around the age of seven, seeing Return of the Living Dead for the first time. And it was on USA. Yeah. I recorded it off of that. So I watched it over and over yeah. and over again. That was my first zombie movie ever. At the time, I didn't understand this was a really dark comedy. Yeah. The comedy was not landing on me at all. <laughs> And then I remember, maybe like a decade later, <laughs> tracking down the uh, r- original version of the movie, the uncut, yeah. and seeing the uh, the full frontal on top of the gr- uh, um, what 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 the fuck is that? It's not it's not like a mausoleum. Uh, I, I I was gonna say mausoleum. I the like the above ground. Yeah. Casket, the concrete. Yeah. Or the cement. Oh fuck, I don't know. Tomb. Let's yeah. say. It's called a tomb. Yeah, it's, uh, the uh, naked punk rock dance on top yeah. of the tomb, and uh, that was amazing. It that was. Fantastic. Uh, so, yes, <laughs> thank you for representing Davenport yeah. as well as you did. She, she was also in uh, Graduation Day and Silent Night, Deadly Night. If I'm That's right. Mistaken. In Silent Night, Deadly Night, she's impaled on reindeer antlers. I would hope so. Mm-hmm. It's, 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 it's a pretty cool <laughs> death. Yeah. I can't remember exactly. I've seen Graduation Day also. I can't remember exactly how she dies, though. I do yeah. remember, though, like she's running from the killer, and at some point while running, her blouse just opened up. I would assume so, yeah. 
She also made her own uh, horror-themed uh, workout video in the 80s. Nice. Yes, Lenia Quigley's horror workout, if I remember correctly. You're going to have to track that down. I think I had it at one point. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm sure I got it somewhere. Yeah. I'll have to pull that out, yeah. <laughs> the video. Yeah. <laughs> so while we're on that subject, let's talk about tits. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> A lot of tits in the movie. Yeah. Uh, I'm glad that Lenia Quigley was in this because she broke up the... I guess I'll say the monotony of fake tits Mm -hmm. that were so prominent in the movie outside of that. Uh, This is a weird metaphor. (laughs) So stick with me on this. Let's hear it. But like there were so many fake boobs in the movie. Mm -hmm. And I was trying to think how how to accurately describe what fake boobs look like. And I thought, okay, have you ever heard of the theory of the moon was created because a meteor crashed into earth and the moon was actually a chunk of the earth and it was jettisoned off and just slowly almost like kind of grew off of the earth yeah. as a result it's like two moons growing off of these women's <laughs> chests like they're technically a part of the body but they're yeah. trying to get away <laughs> and just get caught in the gravitational field of these yeah. women that's what they look like it's pretty accurate, I would actually. They just, you know, they, they don't look right. <laughs> yeah. They don't look horrible. Yeah. But, you know, I don't know. They look very 80s. Yeah. <laughs> There's a, some... A lot of, like, the hair, the outfit, like, everything looks Well, yeah, but I, I specifically mean, like, those are those are quintessential 80s fake tits. Okay, yeah. I see what you're saying. I, 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 I can tell, like, if, if you show me a photo of fake boobs, I could probably... <laughs> pinpoint the decade <laughs> but uh yeah so that that's a major theme throughout the movie yeah tits <laughs> last line of the movie was uh she, she has had a great, great set of tits which is true <laughs> yeah because he was talking about Lenny quigley she has a great she has the best boobs in the movie mm-hmm. without doubt yeah uh, there is one scene in the movie the uh the the virgin dance of the chainsaws yeah is that the term <laughs> Which I was getting, I, when I heard that, I was like, ooh, this is going to be awesome. Yeah. And then it happens and. Lazily it, swaying yeah, side she's, to side. She's and... just holding two chainsaws and just kind of doing like the 80s, you know, bopping from one hip to the other, slowly yeah. dance. I was like, eh, you know. Yeah. I was I was also really excited because I saw a little trivia for it that uh, the, she's you got like body paint on and a thong, mm-hmm. and the body paint uh, took seven hours to put on. And then <laughs> I see her, and I'm like, that took seven yeah. hours to put on. <laughs> May, maybe like they're counting the time where the makeup department was like, oh shit, we forgot the body paint. We gotta go to the store. And get <laughs> Or maybe they're counting like, oh, goodness, we smudged it. We got to do it all over yeah. again. <laughs> Strip them. <laughs> all right. Yeah. <laughs> uh, there were a lot of weird moments in the movie, which I obviously was intentional. Yeah. It was a lot of fun as a result. Yeah. And, and I will say, like, like, a lot of the humor that's prevalent throughout the movie, like, it's... This, this was an interesting movie in my opinion because like we've spoken before I'll agree with that yeah <laughs> we, we've spoken before on uh our our baby ghost episode that mm-hmm. did not air uh we talked about you can have like so bad it's good action and drama and sci-fi but you can't have so bad it's good comedy mm-hmm. I think this may just be an exception to the rule because a lot of these jokes they're not good jokes on paper they're really fucking stupid yeah but I was still laughing at them you know I, I it, it could be the delivery it could be the setting it could just be the, how everything you know comes together in the movie I was actually but, I, I was thinking about that while I was watching it like does this break that rule yeah and I don't think it does it skirts the line, I would say. Like I'm, like, I think the movie's aware that the jokes that they're making are really, really corny. I don't think they're really, really proud of them. Yeah. Proud of themselves for the jokes that they're making. They're just like, meh. And that's pretty much the reaction it's getting from me. Yeah. And then there are moments where it's like, meh. 
because <laughs> they're actually genuinely trying something and it yeah. doesn't work. Yeah. <laughs> like the uh, the virgin dance of the chainsaws. <laughs> it doesn't. I think they were genuinely trying to make that good and yeah. it wasn't and it was funny. Yeah. Uh, I also noticed uh, another thing that I was getting a good chuckle out of during the movie was none of the chainsaws are ever on. Yeah. <laughs> you hear the sound effects, yeah. but it's, you can clearly see that the chain is not moving. Right. Uh, you watched uh, a copy of this you found on YouTube, correct? Right. I, I, saw, I watched a high-def copy, yeah. so I don't know if it was as noticeable on yours. Were you able to spot that, the, the fact that the chains weren't moving? Yeah, I can definitely okay. tell. This movie looked great in high def, I, I, <laughs> which I, it's crazy, but it's like it's so weird to look at something that's so cheap yeah. in such beautiful condition. <laughs> but it, it, was, it, was, uh, it was quite nice looking. Uh, the movie, uh, right out the gate, sets the tone. It has like a little disclaimer, up, yeah. which I'm guessing was influenced by the... Uh, uh, the, the opening little narration prologue from Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Yeah, Master I was Car, thinking that too. Which was actually, uh, the narration was done by John Lorquette in that. Oh, really? Yeah. His payment was a joint. <laughs> I don't know who did this one. Oh, no, wait, no. No, no one no one uh, spoke this. It was just a title Yeah, card. this was just <clears throat> text. Yeah, this one says, uh, the chainsaws used in this motion picture are real and dangerous. They are handled here by seasoned professionals, which I call bullshit. Yeah. On. <laughs> the makers of this motion picture advise strongly against anyone attempting to perform these stunts at home, especially if you are naked and about to engage in stenu strenuous sex. Yeah. <laughs> and then it just has, my conscience is clear, and then signature by the director, Fred yeah. Olin Ray. Uh, so, yeah, I... It, they they're not dangerous. Yeah. They were never dangerous. They were never on. Yeah, fine, whatever. It's still good. It's it's a good foundation. And then, uh, relatively separated from the rest of the movie is like there's just like a little brief little interview. Yeah, like uh, um, not interview. Um, interrogation. There you go. Yeah, interrogation. A questioning by the cops with one of the hookers. <laughs> I mean, well, what happened? I was like, well, yeah, I just we were just trying to. I brought out a sex toy and it just went off, and then and he's dead. It's like this is a sex toy. And just pulls out a chainsaw. It's like, yeah, I'll show you how it works. And it just turns on and just kills the cop. Yeah. I guess off screen. Uh, I don't. I don't know how you'd get away with that because <laughs> we do find we see her later. Yeah. We don't see her very. I don't think we see much of her later. She's, yeah, she's there for a couple of minutes. She has that really shrill laugh. Yeah, and she's got the like. Uh, 50s diner waitress yeah. blonde hair thing going on. I don't, yeah. I don't really know how else to describe that. That's uh, accurate. Yeah. <laughs> there were a couple... Uh, yeah, there were a couple lines that I actually did get a kick out of. Uh, I, I was... Uh, there was one part where they said uh, someone needs some TFC. Yeah. <laughs> and the moment they said that, I knew exactly what the yeah. punchline was. Tender fucking care. Uh, I like the line, uh, the Cuisinart Queen, <laughs> which I believe was the the fifties wait, diner waitress looking chick. Yeah. Uh, I noticed there's one scene in the movie where uh, one of the hookers is with the John who is taking photos of her for a calendar apparently. Yeah. And he gives her a baseball bat to pose with. Mm-hmm. And like I'm not I'm not a, a major baseball enthusiast here. Yeah. But she fucking sucked at that. <laughs> like one hand at the base, as it should be, and then the other hand halfway up the bat. And she knocked him out with that. Yeah. It was like that, no, you're choking up too much on yeah. it. Yeah. Again, I don't give a shit about baseball. I don't I have know very little about baseball. Football's more my thing, but it's like hey, come on. So someone had to have known what the, f I don't yeah. know. Maybe they didn't give a fuck enough. Maybe I'm too. I'm, maybe I'm giving too much of a fuck. <laughs> I'm watching this movie about you know fake blood spout, uh, squirting everywhere and tits <laughs> and everything. I'm like, the baseball stance is all wrong. Yeah. <laughs> fuck this movie. Yeah. <laughs> Table flip. I I was entertained how uh, there are a uh, couple scenes where the the hookers are chopping people up with the chainsaws and there's just limbs yeah. flying <laughs> towards her fingers going towards her uh clearly none of that is 
accurate in the least bit, but it was a lot of fun. Yeah. It was like, you know, very uh, economical way to do it. Uh, <laughs> works like a charm. This was a blast. <laughs> Uh, let's talk for a second about uh, the acting from Gunnar Hansen yeah. as the leader of the cult. <laughs> Oof. That, that was a little disappointing. Yeah. Like, I, I don't know exactly what I was expecting. I was expecting more than what I got either yeah. way. I, obviously, he's there because they want to do a reference to Texas Chainsaw yeah. Massacre. Yeah. <sighs> I, I, I wish they'd found a different way to do it. Yeah. And I, I, he seems like a really nice guy, and that's the problem. Yeah. Yeah, I didn't feel the least bit threatened by mm-hmm. him. He's too nice of a guy. Yeah. And it's coming through this menacing character. Yeah. Uh, there was... Uh, I'm trying to make heads or tails out of some of the notes that I wrote. I just wrote <laughs> one note. It's just a quote that says, Fuck off, slut. <laughs> I don't remember when it happens in the movie and under what context. <laughs> Same with me in my notes saying, uh, making McNuggets with a chainsaw. <laughs> <laughs> I, I really should have, yeah, we should have written down context. Or maybe yeah. not. It, it's, uh, <laughs> it's actually pretty entertaining this way. Yeah, I'll agree. I do notice, or I did notice at the end of the movie, there's, uh, there's like a climactic chainsaw duel between Lenny and Quigley and like the lead evil chainsaw hooker. Yeah. And they duel with chainsaws. While everyone else is like running Fleen. around in circles. Yeah. <laughs> uh, did, was it me or did it seem like the sound effect of the chainsaws clashing together it just sounded like the shutter of a camera going off? <laughs> yeah, I, I, I can see that now. Like I'm almost wondering like when they were filming this did they just have, like, a still photographer <laughs> taking publicity shots? Yeah. And they're like, you know what? That sound works. Let's <laughs> let's just go with that. There's no need for uh, a Foley artist. Right. <laughs> Maybe not the best choice. <laughs> what, uh, what, what are your thoughts on the movie as a whole? I, I had a lot of fun with it. Mm-hmm. I'm... Uh, this was my first experience with Fred Olin Ray mm-hmm. aside from what I know of Alien Dead uh, yeah what is it that you know of Alien Dead what is it the thing that you know about it I honestly don't know <laughs> I don't like you brought it up one day and I'm like oh yeah that uh, and it had that guy in it and I don't even remember who that guy is at this point like I know this movie what do you know about it? I don't know <laughs> yeah and then uh I, I've had uh, Attack of the 60 Foot Centerfold for a while, but I haven't gotten around to watching it. I thought that was the one you had on your list. It, it's on my list. I haven't watched it yet, though. I thought you... Didn't you say earlier that it was scalps that you had? No, I added scalps to my watch list. Oh, okay. Uh, okay. Attack of the 60 Foot Centerfold is on my cult challenge list. So. Have you watched any on your personal cult movie challenge? Not yet. Okay. But this is... We're still recording this, and it's still the first week, technically, so... Well, yeah, it... I, isn't it... I, I can't... Like, hold on, let me see. It's the 7th. Okay, well, tonight's your last night, then. Yeah. And you're going to be behind. Probably. Yeah. Yeah, I, I had a lot of fun with this. Uh, it, it was... I, I I wasn't really sure what to expect going into this, uh, like, tone-wise. Mm-hmm. I, I knew, you know... Horror comedy, I saw the poster, I saw the title, which is probably as much as anyone needs to see to be convinced to watch it. Yeah. But even so, like, I I wasn't sure what I was getting into, like, but I, I was very pleased. I it I was very pleasantly surprised by this, yeah. too. You know, like I said, I didn't have the best track record with this director. Yeah. Uh, I did learn uh, later on that The Alien Dead, which is the one that I remember the most about. Mm-hmm. Uh, I remember thinking Scalps was okay, yeah. but I watched Scalps when I was just kind of mowing through a bunch of slashers that I hadn't seen, so yeah. it just kind of blended with everything else. Uh, the Alien Dead, it just was terrible, but I'm now realizing that was actually the second movie he ever made, and oh, yeah. this is a guy that has made literally hundreds of movies. Yeah. So... It wasn't the best introduction to him. Yeah. Uh, 
based on what I'm seeing of his filmography, yeah, I don't think I'm going to like really delve into him. <laughs> uh, There's a couple I want to check out, mostly yeah, just based on the posters, to be honest, but. Yeah, th- uh, there's some stuff that I'm like, hmm, this could be interesting. Uh, let's see, we got Dinosaur Island. Yeah. That looks interesting. Biohazard, I think. Is one of uh, yeah, them. which is another one I have a high-def copy of, too. Yeah. Uh, Alienator, which I know they covered on Best of the Worst oh, nice. once, and it looked pretty good on there. Evil Spawn, I, I recognize like the the poster for i remember seeing the the vhs of that so for that reason alone i'd want to check it out yeah and then he made some movie called beverly hills vamp that looks like another horror comedy yeah which uh yeah it's got it's got eddie deason in it uh quintessential 80s nerd so you can't go wrong with that yeah the fucking name alone (laughs) oh shit it's also got Britt eckland in it she was a bond girl she was uh Bond girl and uh, the man with the golden gun. Hmm. Also, she gets naked in The Wicker Man. For some reason, I just have a phenomenal knowledge of movies where <laughs> Bond girls get naked. <laughs> it, 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 for the most part, it's just coincidental. Like I like James <laughs> Bond movies, so I've seen a lot of, I've seen all of them, and then occasionally I'll see a movie like, oh, she's, a, oh my gosh, she's taking her top off. <laughs> <laughs> you you compile this knowledge over time. Yeah, these things happen. Usually they're not the, the they're not the reason that I w- watch these movies, but uh, <laughs> they are a reason to like these movies. Yeah, I was gonna need to do. Uh, yeah, I know we're going really off topic. I don't give a fuck. <laughs> yeah, that's that, that's the point of a podcast. Yeah, yeah. you don't like uh, it, keep listening. But <laughs> I, I don't know why, but I, I just assumed you were gonna say kiss my grits. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> well, we were talking about the fifties diner chick. That really. is true. Yeah. Maybe that's why that was in my head. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> was it? Was it Alice? I think Alice's so. restaurant. Yeah. Which is really weird because that's a sitcom based on a Martin Scorsese movie. <laughs> Alice doesn't live here anymore yeah. with uh, Ellen Burstyn. Mm-hmm. I I don't get that. Oh, it's Ellen not the first burst one. in the door and murdered everybody. It's not it's not the first one though because there was that other sitcom Taxi. <laughs> <laughs> You're talking to me. <laughs> it's Andy I Kaufman. got it. Not Andy Kaufman, <laughs> Taxi yeah. Driver. <laughs> oh, Bikini Frankenstein looks really good. Another Fred Olin Ray. Can't recipe. be worse than Frankenstein the Rapist. <laughs> it's two episodes in a row we've referenced. Yeah. <laughs> Let's keep that streak going, people. Yeah. I was, I really want I, I don't remember a single thing about the movie. Haven't watched the movie. But I just want everyone to know there is a movie called Frankenstein the Rapist. Cause you know, fuck subtlety. Yeah. <laughs> Doesn't even look like there's a uh, letterboxed page for Frankenstein the Rapist. Well, someone get on that. Mm-hmm. I've already I've made enough letterboxed pages for movies. I've made zero, and I'm working on <laughs> keeping that streak alive. <laughs> Let's see. I, mean, I wonder how many I made. Oh, Jesus Christ! That's right. I also I even made I made quite a few uh, lists. Solely for this cult movie challenge. Yeah. Uh, I made the list for next week's theme. Yeah, the peplum. Yes. Which I, I guess that's how you pronounce it. I don't, I, I'm not familiar with that word at all. Yeah. P E P L U M. I'm yeah. guessing it's peplum, uh, which is just the way of saying like the uh, the Italian sword and Diamond sandal. Diamond dozen, yeah, yeah. Sword and sandal, biblical like epic knockoffs yeah they, it ca- they all came after like uh, Spartacus yeah. and Ben-Hur Ten Commandments uh, The Greatest Story Ever Told yeah what was the other one The King of Kings yeah. and, uh, Nicholas- which I, n- I never understood why he was king yeah I didn't vote for him <laughs> I never like who, who who declared him a king that's <laughs> it's like oh it's not it's not enough that he's the son of God now he's got to be king. And now it's just any king. The king of kings. Yeah. I should probably point out at he this point. He outranks the king of spades. I should probably point out at this point, I am i don't consider myself a Christian. So <laughs> <laughs> that's probably coming across. Uh, oh, yeah. Okay. So, yeah. Who uh, the fuck's this Jesus guy think he is anyway? <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
I just uh, I looked it up. I've made 116 pages for God movies damn. on Letterboxd. Most of the time, it was uh, like it started off. Uh, I was just making them because I had seen these movies and I wanted to mark that I'd seen them, but yeah. there wasn't a page. And then and, you made. Didn't you make a few for like the psychotronic list? Oh yeah, there was quite a few for the psychotronic list. Uh, I made a couple other lists of, uh, and these are. Uh, themes that are going to come up later in the challenge of uh, there's a disaster movie week yeah and there were a few movies there that uh, weren't on letterbox because they were like kind they were just like cheap uh, made for tv movies there actually were quite a few disaster made for tv movies in the 70s which is probably not too terribly surprising it's not uh i made a couple pages for uh pm entertainment yeah. Which made a lot of action movies. That'll be another theme. Uh, shout out videos, uh, horror movies. Yeah. Which will come up. Yeah, huge amount for uh, Psychotronic. Oh, Jesus. I'm, I'm just looking through the list right now. I had completely forgotten that uh, there was a made for TV remake of Dial M for Murder. <laughs> Starring Angie Dickinson. Of course. Which, uh, uh, yeah, let, let's. We'll do another sidetrack here. Because I just said Angie Dickinson, that just made me think of this. Um, have you ever seen any of the? Uh... I have not seen Police Woman. No, not that. Okay. Uh, of course, you made, you said Police Woman. That made me think of that. Uh, the fuck was the name of that? The Turkish movie where it, they it 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 they took that clip from it. Yeah. They made the YouTube video like the worst death ever. Yeah. Just, the guy just gets shot like seven times in a row, yeah. and every time it's just the slow motion. Yeah. <laughs> Which is not the audio at all. It's not, <laughs> but it, I I don't give a fuck. It, it was still, it was an it was an awesome YouTube video, and I yeah, yeah I watched that movie. It, it was <laughs> it wasn't horrible, but it, it was some it was named something like Police Woman. Yeah. Uh, but no, anyway, uh, Angie Dickinson. Uh, the only thing that I know her from is uh, the Brian De Palma movie Dressed to Kill. Okay. Have you seen any of those like? They're, for the most part, they're like his earlier movies. Were like uh, he made some. There are like erotic thrillers, like Dressed to Kill yeah. and uh, Body Double, and I think there were some other ones that would be considered this. But he, especially in his er, uh, early days, he really was imitating Hitchcock. Yeah. Uh, those two movies, and. Uh, there's one with Marco Kidder called Sisters, and then there's one called Obsession. Like, but have you seen any of those movies? I don't think so. I, I'm pretty sure the only De Palma movie I've seen is Scarface. Okay, I I recommend checking those. Oh, you haven't seen Carrie? I have not. Oh wow, uh, I recommend checking out some of those earlier movies of his because uh, they're so fucking weird, man. That like, I I guess I've seen Carlito's Way. Didn't he do that one as yes. well? Yes. Okay, yeah, I've seen that. They're uh, they're very stylish and they're very entertaining for that, and yeah. also because uh, it really feels like when you're watching a movie, like he has no fucking idea of <laughs> how things are supposed to be. It's just like it's so fucking stylized that it just it loses all semblance of reality. Oh, fuck, I completely forgot he did Mission to Mars and <laughs> Mission Impossible. <laughs> oh, that's right, he did do the first Mission yeah. Impossible. I actually think I still... I, I still think uh, the first Mission Impossible is probably my favorite in the series. Yeah. Because it's the one that makes the most sense. Yeah. <laughs> and also, that's the one that comes the closest to actually, you know, justifying being based on the show. Yeah. Like, it feels the most like the show out of all the movies. But, uh... Yeah, check those out. They're so weird. Yeah, it's, I have to. It's like it's like when you watch the fourth season of Arrested Development. <laughs> it's like the you know it, the things it has the right pieces, yeah, but they're not put together, yeah. and so I feel like I'm watching a dream. Yeah, <laughs> it's like mm, something's off. <laughs> Also, didn't help the fact that I had been up all night waiting for the uh, fourth season of Arrested Development to premiere. <laughs> so I was like tired, and then I'm watching this. It's like, what the fuck? What? It, <laughs> what? Is that? Oh man, that. Oh, man. <laughs> Maybe I am asleep. Yeah. Huh? <laughs> 
Uh, so I think that about does it. Uh, <laughs> I'm glad that we got all of that yeah. summary in at the end. Uh, so yeah, th- this was pretty good. I I, I like horror comedies when they yeah. work, and uh, apparently now I know I even like horror comedies when they don't work. Yeah. <laughs> this was a, this was a really fun one. Yeah, a lot of fun. Uh... I don't think the next one's going to be as fun. I'll, I'll be honest, the the next one is out of all fifty two weeks. This is probably the one I'm least looking forward to. It's just there's like looking through the the list. I'm like there's really nothing on here that I give a shit about. Yeah, I I, I put I I made this a week. Uh, the 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 peplum. Yeah. Week. I made it a week because I if nothing else, it's like it's such. Uh, uh, it's such a prolific, yeah, uh, Genre, theme. Yeah, it's got to be represented on here. I mean, especially you know, for f- it's fucking fifty-two weeks. Yeah, it's got to be somewhere. Yeah, yeah. There's not a lot of them that are uh, readily available. Yeah, in America, uh, most of them are probably going to be in like those uh, cheap ass like uh, Mill Creek fifty, yeah, 50 movies movie packs. for two bucks yeah. sort of things. <laughs> Uh, I don't know. Maybe I'll be pleasantly surprised. Yeah, it. it I, I'm sure it'll be like, eh, you know, it's all right. Uh, and honestly, I can't even really tell you why I spick. I, I <laughs> just accidentally said spick. <laughs> <laughs> can't really tell you why I picked this movie specifically. Uh, I, I think it was just like it looked really basic. Yeah. So I was like, I, I. So often I had the mindset of like, don't. Like if I'm, I'm if I'm trying something out that I've never tried before, yeah, I go with the mentality of like don't don't give me the best, yeah, give me a run in the mill example. That that's how I can truly decide whether or not I give a shit about this, right? And that's basically why I picked uh, the movie that I picked. I think it's the Lion of the, Thebes. Yeah, Thebes, 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 Thebes. Th- Thebians. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> The Lion of Thikes. <laughs> I'm just putting TH at the beginning yeah. of lesbian terminology. <laughs> the Lion of Thizzering. <laughs> Guest host Mike Tyson. Yes. <laughs> uh, I, uh, yeah, on top of uh, the Lion of... <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> in in addition to the Lion of Thebes, mm-hmm. uh, I'm also watching. Uh, I think Hercules and the Captive Women. Oh, you say you're watching it? Yeah, I'll watch it. Well, you haven't watched any of them yet of your own list. It's still week one. For uh, four and a half hours. Yeah, and you said that it's and you're perfectly probably... acceptable to. You know, wait wait a little bit and just play catch up if you yeah, want. Yeah, but to. you're supposed to be one of the top representatives of this cult movie challenge. Yeah. You're dropping the ball, bro. Yeah, it, it, I got time to pick it back up. We're, right. we're still very early in the year. <laughs> well, excuse me if when I bent down to pick the ball back up, my pants ripped, so I'm a little hesitant. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> uh, I, yeah, I. Oh, fuck. All right. I'm going to try and get both movies watched by the time we record the next one. I was just watching it like, where is he going with these? like, yeah, he's... Oh, oh, oh. It's like, I don't know if he's gassy or what. <laughs> I I feel like the next week is just like, it. it's a speed bump. Yeah. Because the two weeks after it, I think, are going to be a lot of fun. I forget what are four and five. Uh, week four is Shaw Brothers week. Oh, yes. Which every movie I've seen from the Shaw Brothers has been a blast. Yeah. Uh, that one we're going with eight diagram pole fighter, which, what? <laughs> Did you just pick four random words? <laughs> you could like you I, seriously could be like, oh, we're going with Shaw Bros week. What's the movie? Neutral Milk Hotel. Sounds good. <laughs> <laughs> just picking th- random words. <laughs> and uh, week five is Giallo week. Oh, nice. Uh, which is Italian murder mysteries. And, with and that, Puddin' Pops. Yes. And uh, wildly attractive Italian uh, TV cooks with wide mouths. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I think that's her name. <laughs> Giallo De Laurentiis. Yes. 
For that one, we're watching a movie called Seven Deaths in the Cat's Eye. Hmm. Uh, the main reason why I picked that one, that is such... Uh, a great example of the weird fucking titles that a lot of these movies had. <laughs> yeah. Uh, that, Four Flies on Grey Velvet. What the fuck does that mean? <laughs> the Bird with the Crystal Plumage. Yeah. It's like... Do you... I yeah, a lot... what I have picked for... Lizard Yellow. in a Woman's Skin. That's another one. That was a really good one, too. Hmm. That's not to say that the other two weren't... Uh, the, uh, the other two were Dario Argento ones, and he was definitely a pioneer of the, yeah. the genre. But um, yeah, I, I guess okay. We're really going off topic. We're going <laughs> way too far ahead. Any any final thoughts on Hollywood Chainsaw Hookers or Fred Olin Ray or anything in particular? Yeah, I'm uh, I'm looking forward to diving a, a bit more deeply into his filmography. Honestly, yeah, I wouldn't mind doing that. Yeah, uh, I I probably won't uh, give two shits about all the the Skinamax stuff that he's yeah. made. But yeah, there were a couple other. Yeah, there were plenty of things. You're like. Mm, yeah, <laughs> peaks uh, morbid curiosity there. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. Uh, I will say Hollywood Chainsaw Hooker is definitely worth checking out. Oh, oh, definitely it, a lot of fun. And uh, it's on YouTube, so oh, it is. Out. Yeah. Oh, oh, that's right. Yeah, yeah that's, 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 that's the version you saw. Since I couldn't find my. <laughs> How was the quality of it, by the way? It, it wasn't too bad. I, I think it was like six forty wide. Okay, well, I think that's a uh, three. 60p yeah that's not too bad yeah it was watchable on yeah. my tv it was i had no complaints well there you go so no one has any excuse to not watch it. yeah there you go so to all of you protestants and mormons <laughs> check it out <laughs> where's your excuse where's your god now <laughs> you've been praying to the wrong god this chainsaw god over here he's so much more awesome yeah Alrighty. righty and on that note uh <laughs> I'd say we're good. All right. All right. Bye. Bye.